fertility is a subject that is so neglected a lot of the time and I really feel so sorry for you guys out there because I feel a lot of the time the main emphasis is given on the woman and actually not enough is discussed and spoken about the man. But in fact, up to 30% of infertility is male related and in up to about 50% of people there's a degree of male infertility as well as female infertility so actually the number of people affected out there is huge but we just don't really discuss it and I want to change that I want to remove and strip back some of those taboos and help you guys out there and also give you some suggestions and tips as to what you can do and how you can try to change your lives around to try and optimize the chance that you'll be able to have healthy babies later on in life so the first thing to say and to address, it's one of the common myths, which is all about male age. What research and studies are showing is that men over the age of 40 do in fact start to accumulate some damage to their sperm that becomes far more pronounced the older that they are. So in fact, women who conceive with a man over the age of 45 are twice as likely to miscarry than if they conceive with a man who's aged under 25. Not only this, but also the risk and chance of autism in the child increases with increasing paternal age as well. So how can we pick up any abnormalities? What could be some problems that men could have? Well, the typical test that we do is a semen analysis. This is easy to do. We look at the sample of semen and then decide what the sperm concentration is, so how many sperm there are, and also how well they're moving, what the rate of movement is like, and how normal they look as well. So the majority of sperm are gonna be abnormal, but then there should be a certain number, so at least 4%, which are normal. What we're looking at here is if the man's semen parameters match the normal range. So there is a certain range which is considered to be normal, and if a man's statistics fall outside of this, then it means that there could be a problem. And this problem could indicate a wider condition in some cases that might need investigating. So what conditions could potentially affect a man's sperm parameters or semen analysis? Well, there's a whole range of these things and sometimes simple things such as infections of the testicular tract could affect a man's semen. Sometimes even simple things like stress, for example, can also affect the volume of semen that a man produces and also how good it is. So it's really important that if there is an abnormal result, it's also repeated. Men tend to produce sperm every three months. So the good news about this is that there's absolutely the potential to try and change some of this through lots of different measures such as diet and also increasing exercise. Also, sometimes men may have certain lumps or bumps. So for example, varicoceles where veins can be dilated in that region or on the scrotum, or they could have a history of undescended testicles, or they could have a swelling that affects their testicular tract. And again, this is important to pick up. Sometimes we need the help of an ultrasound scan to pick it up to see if that could be causing a problem or perhaps causing an obstruction to the semen being ejaculated or passing through all the various different tubules that it needs to. Then there are the less common things which can also impact man's ability to produce sperm, but also the amount of sperm that he has. And these are, broadly speaking, genetic conditions that a man wouldn't necessarily be aware of, but it's important to test for in particular if there is no sperm or very little sperm that's picked up on the semen analysis. And these are things like Klinefelter syndrome or Y micro deletions or being a cystic fibrosis carrier. So important to test for these when there are drastic abnormalities in the actual semen. Sometimes chronic conditions can also affect semen. So for example, having diabetes, could affect the man's ability to have an erection or to ejaculate and this can absolutely impact the amount of semen that he produces and the quantity of the sperm that's there as well. And also previous exposure to chemotherapy or radiotherapy could all have side effects and in the ideal world what needs to happen is before any such treatment is undertaken the man needs to have proper counselling about preserving or freezing his sperm so that he is able to conceive after such treatment because it could damage the testicles and it could also damage any sperm that's produced as well. 
Through the process of epigenetics, for which there is growing evidence for, it is possible that choices we make about our diet and exercise, and really importantly, toxin exposure, so in particular smoking and alcohol, but also certain plastics and products that we use around the house that could have synthetic chemicals, these are all things that could potentially influence the quality of sperm that a man produces. So these are things that we need to be mindful of before we get pregnant because it's that environment that we create within our wombs which may potentially program any future male offspring that's created. Could potentially also mean that any men who were born as a result of an unfavorable uterine environment could go on to experience fertility related problems. And not only that, but could also pass on certain genetics to any future children that they have. So these effects could in fact be transgenerational. For anyone who doesn't want to give up smoking or alcohol or doesn't consider that plastic use around the house is important, I'd urge them to think again. So if you have got an abnormal semen analysis, the next question is what to do about it. The great news is that there is so much you can do about it even before you start resorting to techniques like IVF. So these are things like your diet, trying to have a really clean diet that hasn't got any unprocessed things in it, trying to stay away from sugar and too many sweeteners, and also having plenty of antioxidants as well, so fresh fruit and veg even taking some supplements that also contain these important antioxidants and minerals and vitamins as well. So have a follow on my website. I've got loads of content out there about really great recipes you can make, especially if you're a guy keen to improve his sperm. The next thing is exercise. So trying to boost the blood flow to your pelvic area and to your testicles, really important as well, and can help to improve the semen through that. Also being mindful of the sort of job that you do. So if, for example, you drive in a car for a long period of time or you're a lorry driver, what that can mean is that your testicles can get heated up through long periods of sitting down. But trying to take regular breaks, to walk around, or wearing loose boxer shorts as well instead of tight underwear that will also help to keep the testicles nice and cool. Trying to avoid hot baths as well. So anything that will increase the temperature around the testicles is a no-no. And of course, as I mentioned, smoking and alcohol ideally need to stop. Smoking for sure needs to stop. With alcohol, if you can't cut it out completely, then I'd strongly suggest that you minimize it to around perhaps five units a week because it has got an association with abnormal sperm, but it can also affect your hormones. So it can affect your prolactin and also the amount of estrogen that you have as a guy, which is unfavorable for sperm as well. If you've tried all of these things, and if after repeating the semen analysis, things aren't any better, then there are techniques that we can use to try and help. We have something called ICSI, or intracytoplasmic sperm injection, which is where we take sperm and directly inject them into an egg. And that's really important because it helps to overcome any problems that the sperm might have when it tries to penetrate the egg, and also tries to select or pre-select the very best looking sperm as well. If the exceed doesn't work, then there are more drastic measures that we can take, and sometimes this involves surgical sperm retrieval. So this is where we can sometimes directly aspirate and take sperm from the testicle. But of course, this decision is only made in the context of seeing your specialist who will recommend whether this is something that you should have. So there are lots of options out there, but the main message I wanna get across is that for any guy out there who's wondering about his own fertility and his ability to have children later in life, I think it's really important you consider getting an MOT and that you consider making all of these lifestyle adjustments and modifications earlier and sooner rather than later because it could all in the long run help not just you, but also any future children that you may produce as well. And a final point is if you are on any medication for any chronic long-term conditions, please make sure that again, you see your GP about this because it could be that some of these drugs have side effects on the semen that's being produced. These are all important things to consider before you actually start to try.